Hey everyone, this is John Pearson and I wanted to take a moment to show some rhythm updates that I'm publishing today, uh, which is Friday the 20th, um, with a few changes. Uh, so we have rhythm updates. So the first thing I want to show is I actually have a sample model open. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select a multi-segmented dimension. Select multi-segment and I'll make Dynamo full screen. Here we can see that I have a dimension. Previously, uh, my dimension nodes would not work on a multi-segmented dimension, so that's been changed. And we also added a new node. So there's a new node called get curve, or it's a revised node, to be able to get the segments of the dimension as well. This is particularly useful because now we also have a node for setting the text location. So if I were to come over here and set my dimension text, I now moved it down a little. So using that logic, you can actually start to cinder text or move it out if there's clashes and things like that. Uh, so that's an enhancement to the get curve node and in addition to the set text location node. Another one that uh, is new is uh, the ability to set above values to multi-segmented dimensions. So right now we'll just generate two lists. Uh, one's just the letter A, so I'll plug dimension in and I'll set it to letter A. So all the above values are letter A now. If I were to set it to an array or a list, it'll actually line them up correctly as well. So that's an enhancement. Uh, this node did work for single dimensions previously, uh, which we can also see if I select a single dimension. Um, so, so it'll just continue to work for those, but it now works for multi-segmented as well. So that's really important. Additionally, the set below value will do the same thing. So if I pick my dimension, set a single, or set a array or a list. So now you can start to tweak those values based on what you need. So you can figure out criteria and set them however you want. So those are some dimension enhancements. Uh, shout out to Tom uh, Kunzman. That actually came from him uh, asking me the question on Twitter. Uh, he was wondering why they don't work with multi-segment dimensions. And the short answer is, Multi-segment dimensions are a pain. It took about 10 lines of code that I had in here to about 30 lines of code <laughs> to be able to fix it. But now it works really well. So I'm really happy that the nodes work well. So thank you for asking about that, Tom. And I hope the nodes help out. Uh, we have a couple of additional nodes as well. Uh, I'm sure there's a few others mixed in. But these are ones that I'm really excited about. Uh, these are filter nodes. So a little while back, probably a year ago I had another Dynamo package that I was working on and we had filter nodes in it as well. The problem was I had about 20 filter nodes. So I needed a filter by name for every way that you could filter and things like that. So luckily I stumbled upon an article by Eric Rudisile and Kyle Martin regarding string matching. So being able to match strings by closest match. So if we were to collect something like walls, I'll just get all of my walls, 180 walls, right? If I were to look at the name of these things, and we'll do element.name, we'll see that all my walls have some names, right? Cool. Let's say I want to filter these by their name. And we'll put a watch node. So let's say I want to filter by the name starts with the letter I. So we'll do capital I in my case. And I want to do starts with. So I'm going to type starts with. That's a value. And that's the method. So now we can see, and I'll actually just do element name again. Now we can see that I've filtered out all walls that start with the letter I, uh, capital I specifically. So let's say I wanted to change that. Or let's say I have a user who typed starts with with a space. This still works if you type it wrong. So the methods that I'm including are contains, does not contain, starts with, does not start with, ends with, does not end with, equals, and does not equal. So if we were to even spell this wrong, it should still find it. So the beauty behind this is it's not case sensitive. I can do camel case starts with. And I'll still get the same result because this node is smart where it's realizing that that's the filter method that I wanted. So now let's go ahead and swap this to something else, like ends with. 
So none of my walls end with the letter I. There are a few that end with the letter Y. So now we can see that I've filtered out walls based on the ends with criteria. Additionally, like I said, this ignores case. For the most part, it ignores spelling. You have to get kind of close, but it should get you most of the way there. That was really important to me because I wanted this to all be one node. I didn't want to build something to where you have to memorize every one of these. That's not very fun. So that's element filter by name. If you hover, it tells you all the filter methods. So test that one out and have some fun with it as well. Another one is filtering by a numeric value of the parameter numeric value. So it'll take elements, a parameter name value, and filter value or filter method. So it includes greater than, greater than or equal to, things like that. So if we look at some walls, let's say unconnected height 3,800. So let's go ahead and get walls that are taller than that. So we'll plug walls in. My parameter name is unconnected height. So do an end quote. The value will do 4,000 for millimeters. And the method will be greater than. So let's do greater than. And I know I spelt it wrong. I'll tie that in, tie my elements back in, the value and the method. And we'll actually just reuse this watch node. And then we'll do get parameter. And we'll reuse that parameter. So now, now we can see that I'm grabbing walls whose unconnected height is greater than 4,000 millimeters in this sample model. I can also do, that's the same thing for greater than. So it'll actually take this kind of input as well. So there's several different methods uh, that we can use. I can see that I have a few values that are 6,600. So if I do 6,600 and we'll do equal to, I have three walls that equal that value. Additionally, we could do equal equal to be able to do that same syntax that we've learned in Dynamo. If I were to do exclamation equal, those are walls not equal to 6600. That's a filter method as well uh, for numeric values. So you can also filter stuff by the parameter string. So uh, fields like comments or room name, sheet name, sheet number, those are strings. We can use that same kind of logic. I won't show that node because it's basically the same thing. And we have the filter methods as well. Uh, so those are a few things that you could kick around and try. Uh, I also added an enhancement. And we'll just get rid of all of this. There's also an enhancement to Revit elements element. Get parameter value by name case insensitive. That if we were to search for a certain parameter. So let's pick a parameter. We'll look for base constraint. Let's just say base constraint. Now we plug that in. We should obtain the parameter just like that. So let's say I spelt it wrong. So let's go ahead and like move some letters around. So base constraint. This node now has that logic built into it to where we can actually get the parameter based on that string matching that I mentioned in that article. So not only is it case insensitive, it'll also turn around and try to find the parameter the best it can. So a little more foolproof as well. So that's included in the case insensitive nodes. So there's some quick rhythm updates. I know that video ran a little long, but I hope you can take a look at the nodes, have some fun and get the latest update. Thanks.